Yes. Next news is out of Knoxville, Tennessee in the USA. A pastor who raped his adopted 14-year-old daughter gets lenient sentence due to his faith. Pastor David Richards has repeatedly raped his adopted daughter, starting when she was 14 years old. A jury found him guilty on nine felony counts, including rape, incest, and sexual battery earlier this year. Richards faced the possibility of 72 years in prison. During his sentencing hearing, dozens of people told the judge about what a wonderful Christian man he was. Knox County Criminal Court Judge Steve Sward fell for it. The judge backed away from the 72-year maximum sentence he could have given out and settled on just 12 years. So yes, uh, this man adopted this girl, started raping her when she was 14. When she was 16 years old, she decided enough was enough. She went to the police. Um, he denied everything when this was brought before him, only they found his semen on her bed. Um, that, along with some other evidence, led to a, a guilty verdict for this man. Uh, and then everyone from the congregation came by and was like, but he's such a wonderful Christian man. He's such a wonderful Christian man. So instead of serving his time, he might serve 12 years. He might get let go early. You know, Wait, um, how do we know it was because of his uh, faith that the judge decided that? How do we know this? Because he was looking at 72 years, mm -hmm. um, according to the news article that's presented here, it did say that after 30 people sat on the defendant's side of the courtroom showing up for support, mm -hmm. and the judge let uh, more and more and more people speak to what a great man he was, mm -hmm. um, then the judge, the judge decided that he heard uh, everything that they had said, Amber Richards, his daughter, stepped before her and in the impact statement said, not a day goes by that I don't in some way think of what he did to me. I firmly believe if given the opportunity, he will victimize another young girl. The judge didn't even listen to her. And then, uh, yeah, so, so during the time of the sentencing, you're a good Christian man. Here you go, dude. 12 years. Wait, so... Did the judge, like, because this would be illegal if the judge made it clear it was because his, did he say anything that made it very clear that the judge did this because of his Christian faith? We don't know that for sure, 100%, Louis. Um. Because if he did say anything that made it clear it was because of his faith, this would be definitely illegal. This would be, un this would be unconstitutional, wouldn't it? In the United States? No. So judges can actually use, and not only can they actually use religion as part of their uh, sentiment towards somebody or, or dislike towards somebody, they can also uh, give you sentences that require religious uh, rehabilitation. Some of these things are starting to get fought now, but you have to understand, like, let's pretend I go to court and I'm an atheist, I'm an open atheist, and the judge says, you know, I don't like that about you. I think you need God, and I think that part of your rehabilitation is going to be a 30, uh, you know, 30 session trial with a Christian psychologist. Um, he has every bit of right to do that if he feels that's what's going to help rehabilitate me to become a good functioning member of our society. We have to look at the fact that these cases out there exist. Judges have have passed down to, to family members, um, parents who are divorced and, and have custody over their kids' issues, that they have to go to church. Um, and as these things are becoming fought more and more and more, we're starting to understand, you know, okay, people aren't just going to sit and take this anymore. But what are you going to do if you're convicted and a judge, a judge is allowed to use your character's witnesses to make a decision on leniency for you? So if this judge is like, you know, good Christian man, a lot of the people who spoke said they didn't believe he truly did this. Hmm. That is neither here nor there because the jury spoke, right? But a judge is allowed to take all of that into consideration. Absolutely, that is not against the law. So I think that you know our our judicial system, no matter how great it can be, has a lot of flaws, and this is unfortunately one of them. I mean, the isn't the judge part of the state, and isn't there supposed to be a separation of church and state? There's supposed to be, um, but that is again, you have to show. 
that's when you're showing favoritism. So he's, he is a part of the state and he is not allowed to show favoritism towards one God or the other, right? He may, he may say that, uh, you know, whatever faith you want to choose, right? Mm -hmm. Say you're an atheist. He might say you need to go to religious, uh, counseling based on what faith you choose. Um, so he can do things like that. He can say that he thinks it's great. Somebody's a Christian. He can say that he, you know, it, it's great. He's a Christian and he deserves leniency because he's a good Christian man. He can do that because he is not excluding the fact that somewhere down the line, he might say someone's a good Muslim man and deserves leniency based on the fact that he loves God so much. So, you know, he's, they're it's allowed to do that. Okay. Yeah, um, it's, it's other than the judge being, you know, whatever the judge did. How many people did you say showed up to say that this is a great man? Thirty people. Thirty sat, people sat on his side. I think the judge listened to twelve. And overall. they knew that this guy actually raped a fourteen-year-old. Oh yeah. Um, and they and, still and thought like, he was a good man. See, still this, thought he was a good man. This is how Christianity fucks with your head, you know, because as long as you believe in Jesus all your sins are forgiven and you can still be a good person. And they, right. These people, they didn't just go there to speak on his behalf. They sat through the trial. Mm. So they definitely got the same information that the jury got, which you know made them conclude the fact that clearly this guy has been raping this poor young woman um, or child even. So, so they heard the same things, but because he's a good, strong Christian man in their mind, that goes out the window. Right. See, one thing... It's very fucked up about Christianity is that all sins are the same. You know, some people steal candy, some people lie to their mom, some people rape children, some people commit genocide. We're all just sinners, right? And we're all forgiven through if we believe in Jesus. So this is like people think religion brings you morality. No, it doesn't. It fucks up with your already existing sense of morality that most of us have naturally. It fucks that up in a very unhealthy way so let me see what the top comments are um uh, maria is saying i feel like when a judge makes a terrible decision like this when the man gets out and rapes again the judge should be sentenced to his previous 70 plus years time uh, i don't think that's a good idea uh travis saying all i ever see are reasons that i am glad to be atheist um well, I mean, based on... Oh, never mind. The, Diana is saying, apparently we need more atheist judges. I don't think we should have any religious tests for judges, actually, Diana. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we are doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.